Hello everyone, Michelle here from Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today is a fun little tutorial on how to use some stamps. Um, I don't have a huge collection of stamps, but I do have some that I really love. And I love to just kind of play with them and create some papers that I can use further down the line for journals. Um, so today I'm gonna use a jelly plate here. Uh, where's my container? This is what I buy here. I get it from Michaels. They're not very cheap, but um, they they last forever. Uh, you can make your own jelly plate, of course, using gelatine. There's a lot of um, video tutorials on how to do that. Uh, but this is a store-bought one. And what size is it? It is, let's see here. It's a five by seven inch. 12.7 centimeters by 17.78 centimeters so there I haven't got tons of experience with jelly plate printing I've only just started to kind of dive into it um, I really find it fun but printing for me print making stamps and stuff has never really been my go-to I think it's because I'm a very messy person and I end up getting it all over the place um, but now I've kind of embraced that and uh, I really enjoy getting it all over the place and creating some very messy papers. So that being said, here are some of the projects we'll do today. Um, basically, I have taken some construction paper. So let me find it here. This super fine, cheap dollar store construction paper. And it was kind of a very soft yellow. And I left it in the window. So I spread them out where the UV would hit it and what it did was it softened it even more to a vintage colored paper, which I really like. So I'll probably, this is all I have left. So I'll probably repeat the process. Um, I also have a coffee dyed paper here. Uh, it's a little bit heavier in a cardstock than this, um, this super fine. This is really delicate, cheap construction paper. So it, it does rip and tear pretty easy. So bear that in mind. Um, and then I have the coffee dyed paper. And then I also have just the plain non coffee dyed paper that I get from uh, Staples. And it's just kind of like a, it's got a color to it. It's not white because uh, white, I have to use a lot of ink to tone down. I don't like the bright, bright white. Uh, so this is a sample of that paper and been stamped on so it's a lot of fun because you can create your own papers you can tear these up you can make um uh, collages on top of them it's the possibilities are endless but i wanted to play mostly today which is why i brought the jelly plate out i wanted to play with this vintage look i really love how this paper looks like it's come out of a book and it's a like a specimen so here's some samples that i've done and we're going to repeat that today and just simple. So here's one that I played with some white paint. I never stamped anything on it. Here's some brown paint. Uh, these ones, however, are done with ink and that's what we're gonna use today. So they just look old, which I really like. And you can cut them up. You can create a little book with them, a little stamp book. Here's some done on thicker paper, the coffee card paper. Here's some that have been backed onto brown paper. And here's a big one that's been backed and it makes a nice kind of card. Here's some bigger sheets. So really, really old looking here. Just using the stamps that I have. So those are the ink and here are some done with paint, which I'm not gonna do this time. Uh, here's some ink. They are, again, really beautiful. I really love playing with these. Very simple, but it's got a very elegant vintage vibe to it and it's simple like this is literally ink and a stamp and that was it there's another one so there's quite a few here and the different inks uh, create different textures because they uh, they peel away from the jelly plate they don't coat it like a paint they bubble so there's a reaction to it and that's it so let's have some fun let's do that so what I do have is a jelly plate I have a brayer. I finally bought one. And you can see I've been having some fun with it. And I'm just going to, so this, these tools you will need for this effect. Um, it's just a lot easier. I'm just gonna put a piece down here to 
to play with. My desk, again, is a mess. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in frame, because in the last video, I was my camera must have dropped when I pressed the play button, the record button, and half of it was not in frame. So, not very professional. All right, so there's my jelly paint. I got my brayer, and then I have my distressed inks. Uh, I have distressed oxides. So we're gonna play with both. And these are the, some of the colors I've taken out. So I have brushed corduroy, uh, bundled sage, frayed burlap, crushed olive, which is my favorite on this paper that we're gonna use, the rusty hinge and salvaged patina. So there's some samples. And I also have my Coca exclusive inks. Um, this is a water-based dye ink and I, I like to stamp with this one. I also have a collection of stamps I have out, and like I said, I have I have stamps, but I don't have a huge, all my stamps are from secondhand shops. This is probably, I believe, the only stamp I've bought online that I paid for, and it came with a wood block, which I peeled off, and I use this one all the time. But these collections here, and I'll show you, are all secondhand. So these ones are secondhand. These ones here, which we'll play with in a minute, are my travel ones. Uh, these ones are from Your Creative Studios. So I will link them below. They come with a, you can buy them individually, I believe, or you can buy their monthly subscription, which comes with all kinds of fun goodies. And then the pink ones that you're gonna see are ones I've carved myself. So I have done tutorials on how to do carving, how to create your own, um, stamps. I've done it on the, the lino cuts and I've also done it on old uh, junky erasers. So I've carved into those as well to create my own stamps. So there's that collection. There's also these guys I got secondhand. Uh, I, I got these at Value Village and these happen to be one of my favorites. They're very dainty and delicate, which I really like. So I got those. And then I've got these two. And I bought these at a scrapbooking store. They're, uh, they're just textured. They're really neat. And I can't remember the name of the company that uh, makes these, but um, they're really cool. I bought these, at, uh, I paid for these. So I paid for these and I paid for that. And everything else, well, I paid for these too, but they're secondhand and everything else I either made or was given to me through a subscription box. So. That's my spiel. This one I can't remember where. I think this was secondhand as well. And I pulled it off the block. So you notice I there's a very few. I think it's just this one. Oh, here's another one. I think it's just this one where I kept the block on. Um, I liked, when I use my stamps, which we'll see in a minute, I don't usually use the whole stamp. Some images I will. And then other images I just, I like to kind of use part of the stamp. So I'm going to use this um, crushed olive and I'm going to throw some on my my um, jelly plate here. And I know it's really quite difficult to see uh, the color. I'm just going to roll it out. And you can see there's not tons of ink on here. So when you when you go to do this sort of thing, you're gonna kind of underestimate how much ink is on here and kind of experiment over and over again. So that's why it's kind of nice to use these cheapy papers. So we're just gonna do a solid green one. And I just lay it down and I pull it up and there's my green. And then I like to move over and take a little bit of, where's my distressed oxide here? I had it just a second ago. I have, I forgot to show you, I had this little mini distinct vintage photo one that I like to use as well. And I'll put that in a few spots and I'll roll that out. And there's still gonna be green on my brayer. And then I'm gonna take my paper and I'm just going to put that on there. They overlap or don't overlap. It doesn't bother me. I'm not trying to create a perfect print. I'm experimenting and playing here. And then sometimes I like to clean my brayer off on the back. Now, um, you're going to get messy. I get messy. <laughs> That's when I know I'm having fun. So there's my two spots here. 
So you can see how it bubbles and then how it kind of smooths out. So this is where I, I smeared it with the, with the um, tiny miniature one and the roller didn't smooth it out, but it still adds texture, which I really like. So we'll do a few of these and then we're gonna play with the stamps on top. So let's do another one. So like I said, I really like the vintage green, but let's maybe try the rusty hinge. Try the rusty hinge here, see what we get. So you gotta kinda really work work the brayer here to move it around. And like I said, you probably can't really see much of what's happening. And let's try this color on its own. Throw that on. I give it a good decent press on the back. Pull it up. So that's a nice kind of orangey tone. And then maybe we'll put some of this green back in. Move that around. You could add paint. Uh, we'll do, I have another video where um, I'm going to be showing you some of my kind of paint techniques on this. Not really techniques, but experiments as well. Because that's all this is to me, is a constant experiment with this jelly plate. And it's always fun because you don't know 100% what you're going to get. So that's another nice color. So this is a bit orange for me. I might tone it down a little. So let's add some, maybe some brushed corduroy. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in frame here. I'm just going to roll this out. Sometimes I like the brayer mark to show, so I'll leave a crease in there just for some added texture. Let's see if I can line this up a little. So it's gone a little bit darker, which is nice. I like that too. It's still a bit orange for me. So if I had orange and green, it's uh, orange and blue, it should go a little bit more brown. In my head it would anyways in theory because you're miss you're mixing all the primary colors together and usually you get a brown what i love about these inks is um they stay they give the appearance of a lot of depth because they have a beautiful translucency to them so they're going a little bit more brown because you're mixing the blues and the oranges which is your three primary colors so that's nice it's kind of old looking let's do one more so what haven't we used yet? Let's try the let's try the bundled sage. I don't think I've actually tried this one yet. Throw that on there. And if you hear a kind of rumbling behind the camera, it's my dehumidifier. I'm working in the basement and uh, it's uh, going full force. <laughs> let's try um let's try coffee dyed paper, shall we? Let's see what we get that on there. So that's a nice vibe. That's pretty actually. I like that. And let's go dark. Let's go for a little drama. So we're going to go with the frayed burlap, which is I think a pretty dark gray. And of course, it will still have some of that green on my brayer. You can clean your brayer in between by just, oops, rolling it off on another piece of paper this and I love this too actually because it creates some really beautiful textures especially with the paints and uh, a lot of paper you can use later there super simple and fun and unpredictable in a lot of ways all right so I'm gonna move this out of the way and we'll stamp so we've got some samples here I'm gonna build these back up so if you've got inks, and if you don't have inks, again, you can use paint, you'll get a different effect. This is a paint. So this is a scratched white paint and then an, another layer of brown on top. So you can, you can play with paint if you don't have inks, but um, it will be different. So I love the translucency of these paints, of these inks. Duh. <laughs> so I'm gonna use that cocoa color and I'm gonna just randomly steal some images 
I don't even pay attention if they're the right way up or not. I just have some fun putting these textures down. And that's the way I look at these stamps is textures. Not so much what they're saying or the image that they have, but more of a texture. And I just slowly build them up. So I've got that. This one is really fun. So it's kind of like this bubbles. So I'm just gonna add some of this here and just add some textures in. I'm sure you've seen this a million times where people just play with their stamps, but I do really enjoy it on this old, well, it's not even old construction paper. It's just been exposed to UV light. So it's broken up the, um, it's softened it even more. So let's use this guy because he's one of my faves. It's kind of like a Queen's Anne's lace type stamp. Sorry, I don't know the brand name or anything. Like I said, I got them secondhand at a, a thrift shop. Let me move that over so it's a little bit more straight. I just push down, and of course you can use a stamping block. I don't have one. I, uh, I've always wanted one, but I never think to get one when I'm out. So I love that all on its own, just like that. I think it's really pretty. So I'm gonna push this here and then reload it. So see, it's got messy there, but it, it's all part of the texture. And then you can also change the orientation of the stamping. Don't, everything doesn't have to be vertical or horizontal. It can go in any direction you want. And it's that beautiful layer of ink underneath that really lends some drama to the piece and some vintage, vintageness. Uh, what do we want to add to this one? Let's do some lines. So I'm gonna just use half of it. And either I can use it for somewhere to journal or I can use it as part of the actual design itself. So again, just having fun with your stamps. And that's all the stamps I have. What I showed you is everything I have. So there's page number one. All right, let's try another one. So this is really pretty. Sometimes, like I did on that other one, it's really pretty just to be very simple. See how I get that ink on the corner? Um, really doesn't bother me. So, but if you're a clean person and you like things very organized, um, then you'll want a separate, oops, a separate spot for your stamping, your loading of your ink. And then just something as simple as one stamp on this vintage paper can be really nice. Um, let's see, what else have we got? Let's use some that I've made here. Where's my favorite one? So I do have a video on how I make these lino cuts. And I do have a favorite one. Did I not show it? Mm. Come on. I don't know why it's my favorite. It's very rustic looking. But I use it all the time, this one here. But I think this is maybe the second or third stamp that I ever carved. I use it all the time. And I just kind of apply it random. There's just something about this stamp I love. I don't know why. Maybe you know why. <laughs> just really appeals to me. So I'm going to use it like that. Kind of create a branch. And then what else have we got? So I've got my birdie. Let's use some, let's use some writing here. So I'm not sure if this is Japanese or Korean. Uh, sorry, I apologize, I don't know. But if you know what it is or what it says, please let me know, that'd be great. And I just kinda add it without pushing the whole square down. That's probably maybe why I don't use the a buy a block because I don't want a, I don't like to use it as a full stamp all the time. I like to kind of load it up random and go from there and just grab where I put the pressures where the printing will 
print the most. So again, very random. Um, I like this postcard one. I think we used that one already. Where's my my favorite one? This is my favorite one. I use this all the time. I got this on Amazon. I'm sorry, I don't know. It was a long time ago, um, but it's just cursive writing. Uh, and they're pretty popular. You can get them just about anywhere. And I love the texture it leaves behind. And this is just stamping with one color right now. You can stamp with all kinds of colors. Maybe we could try that. But I just love the antiqueness of it. <laughs> is that a word? Antiqueness? What else have I got? Oh yeah, I really like this one. It's just dots. I'll show you. So I just keep it on the foil that it came in and then I just dot it on. Sorry if my camera is shaking. I'll bring it a little closer to you so you can see it in a second. But it's the texture and the layers that I really love. So that's the dot there. Isn't that fun? Again, super, and because the paper's so fine maybe, it also feels vintagey. So it's so fine look that the ink is going right through. That's how thin this paper is. Almost like a rice paper, it's faded so much. So let's do one more. You can do something like this guy, uh, where it's a full on pattern. Try not to bang on my desk too much because I know it echoes in my camera. I have to get a new desk. And you can just use the whole block for this one and create a nice patterned paper for your journals with a real nice antique vibe to it. So let's see if I can line that up. Do my best, doesn't matter if it is or not. Is that right? I think I need to go this way. Doesn't matter if it is or not. It's for fun. There we go. So there's the nice little vintage paper. Then you can do themes too, depending on your depending on your um, repertoire of stamps. So we'll put some postage stamps in here. It's got a bit of a sticky back in case you're wondering why my fingers are magic. There's still a bit of stick left from when I peeled it off the packaging. So there's some stamps. And then I have these really beautiful stamps from um, Your Creative Studios with Trains for Traveling, which are really quite pretty. I have a couple. Here's another one. So let's use these. So if you wanted to do a travel theme, of course, it all depends on your collection. I'm just going to put a train right through the middle here. And the orientation as well, uh, like I said, doesn't have to just go vertical or horizontal. You can create almost like a wrapping paper effect by changing the direction. So if I put one here, now change the orientation of the paper throughout. So there's no right side or uh, right side up. That's what I'm trying to say. So the cute little trains. And then this one is another train. So let's try this one. My ink is starting to get used up. I use this one a lot. Put this one here. A little travel. And then again, you can just use part of it. So let's use part of this round one, which is a railway. There's like, sorry, film on it. So a rail, railway station it says. So let's just try and get the railway part and just use part of the stamp. And then you can drop the whole stamp in. That's kind of fun. So it's got a real vintage wrapping paper vibe to it. And you can add something bold. So for example, these ones we carved, this was a, another tutorial on how to just take your carving knife and go into an old, uh, like an eraser. So I bought these at the dollar store, dirt cheap, and now I have these cute little flower stamps. So I load it up and you can do something bold, like a wallpaper pattern almost. And 
and you just collect these papers and put them in a journal or whatever whenever you're ready to use them lots of fun so you can see it's the possibilities are endless you can just keep going and keep going and that is just using inks on whatever paper you have so in order for it to look vintagey is that a word vintagey in order for it to look vintage you want to start the, on a base where the paper is old looking so coffee dyed tea dyed um, even this beige one let's do one of these just so you can see so that is an undyed piece um, where is that paper here it is so it doesn't have quite the same look but that's not saying you can't add ink after so let's uh, let's just stamp a few things on here just for fun while, while I have you while I have your attention so I'm gonna go back to my favorite and I'm just gonna pop him down wherever and that unevenness of the stamping to me adds even more vintage to it um, I don't want a perfect stamp every time so I'm gonna put that one in uh, let's use this guy Again, I'm not worried about my corners inking on my paper. It doesn't bother me. I'd like to add, add that stuff to it. So let's change direction here so you can see that you don't always have to use the same orientation. And I'm just gonna kind of flop it down. just building up think of it in terms of texture as opposed to a full image we'll add in some lettering lettering and I also have another video coming out right after this one on using different materials to stamp on labels and things like that and uh, I think it uses some paint as well which is really fun so stay tuned for that hit the like or subscribe button and the notification button so you don't miss out so this uh, stamp is kind of weird it's it's almost like an old postcard I guess uh, but I'm not too fond of it, but I do like the corners, so I'm just going to ink the corner. I'll make sure my ink here is actually in view. So I'm just pushing down, and then I'm going to just push the corner in. And again, just adding more texture and repeat patterns and texture to my papers. Okay. So that, and you can see this one's not quite as vintagey looking because it doesn't start with a old looking piece of paper. Here's a daffodil I carved. Let's see. Let's see if I like this. Can't remember it to be honest. That's pretty bold. Whether they're gonna like it or not. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. It's a pretty graphic one, but it's nice. one over here maybe going off the page and this one going this way and right in the corner now this will paper will either be used as a solid piece of paper it's going to be cut or it's going to be ripped um, so again just building up those textures so I'm just gonna put some lines in now and I'm only inking this this much. I'm not inking the uh, the whole stamp. Some lines. What else do we want to add? We've got this guy. He's pretty bold as well. I think we've got enough bold in there. Let's use our little dots. Where'd he go? I like this one. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in some negative spots. And again, this is using one color of ink right now for stamping I've only used this cocoa one so you can see you can really get into your collection of inks 
and I think maybe we'll stain this guy after maybe rubbing some ink in. See how we like it. So you can see you created all this texture and interest on the paper and you can keep going and keep going but I like that how it is. I like the various orientation of direction so maybe we'll add a little bit oops of this hang on a second this crushed olive if I can find there it is this <laughs> this old thing so let's see you can change the color of it move the color through so if you're building a journal or a, a piece of artwork you can now introduce the color schemes that you like and I'm sorry if my camera shakes let's try some of this salvaged patina too so you feel like that and it mixes kind of creates a, a soft green and just introduce that in a few spots create some drama here I'm in frame this time So this paper originally, I would probably wouldn't be able to do that too because it's just too thin. But this this cardstock, it's, uh, yeah, it's a I would classify it as a cardstock printing paper. You can now kind of abuse it by pushing quite hard. It gives it a nice grunge vibe. So do we want to add something else to this? Do we want to go bold with some rusty hinge? Let's try. I think we need a lot of this because it is quite strong color. Just real delicately added in. Just kind of scrub it out a little bit. So you can see like the, the possibilities of just playing with your stamps and paper are so much fun. Okay, so we put orange on that side. Let's try maybe the bundled sage on this side. And it's still gonna have some orange in it. I'll try and keep it as clean as I can. Just applying quite a bit of pressure here so it might shake my camera. nice soft patina on this side and a bolder striking kind of pattern on that side. Really fun to create your own papers. I've been really enjoying it. There we go. So there's another another paper with really pretty delicate soft images in there. Just using paper ink and inks and a couple of tools I guess with the jelly plate for the for these so here's some nice vintage vibe and you can fold these in half and just sew them together and create a journal all on its own you could cut them up into bits and bobs and make little tags with it like I started here so I just cut it out the part I like and stuck it on but I just love the look of these so I hope that gives you some ideas just to have fun and play and get your hands really dirty. And that way you know you're having fun and create some beautiful vintage vibe papers. Try that uh, method of too, if you have construction paper and you're not sure what to do with it, stick it in the ultraviolet light and the sunshine and let it fade. I did it once with um, the cheapy blue, excuse me, the cheapy blue version of construction paper and it faded to this brownie green color which was also really fun. It does kind of um, weaken the page, of course, because it's cheap paper, which is why it fades, but uh, it's still a lot of fun. Still gives you a, a new result. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you had fun watching that. Uh, stay, stay tuned because we'll be doing more. We'll be playing some more, uh, be playing with things like this coming up next, as well as these sorts of things. This is really fun. This is on a um, uh, label, but I'd like to show you the next uh, couple of other ideas that I have.
they're kind of similar, but they're using different materials and stuff you might have laying around that you're not sure how to use. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day, everyone. Bye!